just minutes ago, the U.S. Supreme Court decided it will stay out. The surprise decision at the Supreme Court, where the justices declined to hear any of the challenges. October 6, 2014, the Supreme Court decided not to hear any cases on the topic of same-sex marriage, a decision that affects us and our community, as well as every community in America, by setting up the road to marriage equality. The decision effectively legalizes same-sex marriage by not overturning the several appeals court decision which ruled gay marriage bans in five states unconstitutional and legalized marriage in those states, including Oklahoma, Indiana, Wisconsin, Virginia, and Utah. This decision is especially remarkable because just 20 years ago, the possibility that gay marriage could happen was not even on most people's radar. It all began in 1993 when Hawaii ruled gay marriage bans in the state to be unconstitutional because marriage offers couples over a thousand legal protections, meaning that not allowing same-sex couples to get married violated the Equal Protection Clause, which stated that all people would have equal protection under the law. This ruling caused an immediate frenzy as states rushed to amend their constitutions to specify that marriage was considered between one man and one woman. And soon after, in 1996, Congress passed the Defense of Marriage Act, otherwise known as DOMA, which allowed states not to legally recognize gay marriages performed in other states, as well as defining marriage as between a legal union between one man and one woman, meaning that married gay couples would not receive the federal benefits that are associated with marriage. Since then, the Defense of Marriage Act has been ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court case Windsor v. the United States, in which a woman, Edith Windsor, sued for being required to pay an estate tax of $350,000 on property that she and her wife owned together when her wife and partner of 46 years, Thea Spire, died. Though the two had married legally in Canada, DOMA caused their marriage not to be recognized in New York, where they lived. Windsor held that DOMA violated the Equal Protection Clause, which the Supreme Court found to be true. Since the removal of the Defense of Marriage Act in 2013, the federal government has left it to the states to work out the issue of gay marriage individually. This year, several appellate court cases about the constitutionality of same-sex marriage bans were submitted to the U.S. Supreme Court for review. However, the Supreme Court's refusal to hear these cases upholds the appellate court's decisions, which overturned gay marriage bans in five states. This Supreme Court action makes it seem likely, if not inevitable, that marriage equality will soon be a reality in the U.S. Here's how we think it will happen. The United States Equal Protection Act. So at this point in time, what we have is we have it going through state by state by state by state. There have been some recent um, court of appeals who have found that there is um, that the uh, state constitutions are valid, and there's reason to believe that based upon those recent rulings, it may make it back to the Supreme Court of the United States, and the Supreme Court may make a determination once and for all whether or not this should be um, legal on a nationwide basis things, therefore, we decide by majority vote. But the other equally important, equally American idea, essential to our idea of constitutional Republican democracy, is that not everything gets put up to a vote. It's not okay to say that I'm going to vote on whether Brian Brown should have freedom of speech, or that because we don't like what somebody else says, we're going to remove their religious freedom or their right to marry. Where there are certain inalienable rights, basic freedoms and protections that are guaranteed to all. One example of someone in our community who is directly affected by the Supreme Court's decision is Kristen, who has faced threats to her and her partner's marriage since 2004, first due to DOMA and then again due to Proposition 8, a California constitutional amendment passed in 2008 that made it illegal for gays to marry. The proposition was found unconstitutional in 2013. So, um, basically, in 2004, um, I was with my partner at the time, and um, you know we were living together and planning to be together for the rest of our lives. And we got a phone call from some friends of ours that said, "Hey, you know, uh, we just heard in San Francisco the mayor Gavin Newsom is going to open up um, marriage." And we're like, "This is a really cool monumental thing because." You know, before that, marriage was between a man and a woman only. That was that's the law, and um, so we were like, "Yeah, we want to do that." And it was Valentine's Day weekend in two thousand four, so a group of us flew out there and camped out um, because the lines were huge and um, in the rain, and waited for the courts to to open, and we were able to get married. And about six months later. We got a letter in the mail from the government saying, we're sorry, 
um, your marriage is annulled. It's no longer valid. Then we had the California vote on Prop 8, and um, and it, it was approved. So California basically said, no, the marriage should be banned. Um, and we still didn't know if that was going to go back retroactively. We didn't think that our marriage would be affected, but, you know, there was a lot of question mark. Got to keep our marriage. Yeah, we're married. And our daughter, who is now seven, um, knows that her moms are just like everybody else's parents that were married and were a family unit. Stories like Kristen's are the reason every state needs to have marriage equality. However, many people oppose the idea, often for religious reasons, as Pastor Steve Beckman of Gloria Day Lutheran Church explains. Well, I think part of that has to do with the way they read the Bible, and also it has to do with how they understand the Bible. Um, those are not necessarily the same thing, how you read it and how you understand it. Um, when I talk about how people understand the Bible, different people in the church have had different ways of understanding the Bible. There are some passages in the Bible that seem to um, be rather harsh on homosexuality. But nonetheless, most communities have made progress in their acceptance of homosexuality. Our community in Long Beach, California has a large gay population. As of 2010, around 2% of the couples in Long Beach were same-sex couples. Though gay marriage is currently legal in California, all of these people are affected by the status of marriage equality in the entire United States. We contacted the mayor of Long Beach, Robert Garcia, with some questions about the progress of marriage rights in Long Beach. He said, it's clear that Long Beach supports marriage equality. 57% of the city voted against Prop 8 in 2008, and I believe that there is even more support for marriage equality now. Also, Long Beach has long been a place of tolerance and tremendous diversity. I do think that more people who identify as LGBT, particularly young people, may be deciding to live here because of our reputation for tolerance, which includes support for marriage equality. Our country has made a tremendous amount of progress in a very small number of years. In 1995, only a few states had laws regarding same-sex marriage, and all of those were against it. Today, same-sex couples have marriage rights in 35 states, and more are clearly on the way. Surveys show voter approval of same-sex marriage increasing steadily over the past years, and as of 2014, 59% of people approve. It is something to truly be gay about. 